What's up, Cradle fans? It's Banff here, and today we're back to normal videos. No podcast this time. Uh, today's video, we're going to talk about icons, and specifically icons that might be manifested after the book Reaper. So if you haven't read Reaper yet, this is my grand proclamation that there will be spoilers. If you have read Reaper or you're watching this a couple years in the future, let's just talk then. So currently we have one sage amongst the group. That's Linden with the void icon. In Reaper, we saw Athan almost manifest a ton of different icons somehow uh, because he's Osriel and all that. What we haven't seen is Yaren, Mercy, or Zeal manifest an icon. Uh, or Orthos or Little Blue, clearly, but for Little Blue, she's going to have to build herself a human body first. And Orthos is an underlord. <laughs> He's got a ways to go. So we're going to talk about all that. And that's uh, I'm using a different format. So you're going to see some things pop up on screen here and there. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm interested in how the video and audio quality will sound because I'm not recording with OBS. I'm recording with a different software. Uh, that will allow me to live stream in the future or to easily host interviews, um, stuff like that. So Remix and I will be using this for the podcast in the future because I don't know, there's it, a lot of nice stuff. So let's get into the content of the video. We're going to talk about, let's talk about Mercy's icon first. So I think it just popped up on screen. We're talking about Mercy's icon. She might not manifest an icon, but I think she will. And it's it's kind of interesting when talking about Mercy because we're not expecting her to ascend, but we're kind of expecting Monarchs to be a thing of the past by the end of the series. And so I'm not really sure which path she's going to go, but just to have fun, we're going to talk about her getting an icon. And... I normally in the past I would have said that she's going to get the hunter icon or the bow icon. She seemed to uncover deeper truths when she was in the labyrinth training against her mother, watching how her mother was holding a bow. And she's received some training from Lyrian, Larian, whatever, uh, as a reward for her performance in the Uncrowned King tournament. So they I, I feel like that might be a red herring. I'm still kind of on like the everybody can manifest multiple icons bit, but we haven't really seen that happen with any of the main characters yet. So who really knows? But I actually think it would be awesome if Mercy manifested the joy icon. If Mercy accomplished what Ethan wasn't able to and manifested the joy icon. Why do I think she would be a great candidate for the joy icon? Uh, one, because she's the happiest person that we've encountered in the series. Far happier than Nathan. She has a naturally a natural joyful disposition. She's always trying to help people and make friends. She's never trying to compete. Her name is Mercy. And her overlord revelation was, I am Mercy, not Malice. Meaning, I like being merciful. I like being kind and making friends. I like doing things differently. And I, I kind of think that's why Ethan was talking about how like, yeah, the joy icon exists. It's just not common on cradle because cradle is such a bloodthirsty power, hungry ambition driven planet where might might is right that kind of concept where if you're powerful, you can do whatever you want until you piss off someone more powerful or piss off a clan more powerful. And Mercy being the daughter of one of the monarchs and being the heir to the that monarch's clan, she, I don't know. She, she hasn't had it hard, which is one of the major points of, in her character arc is that she she's had to struggle to life or death situations 
just to get to the part where she can be an overlady. You know, like it, the, she lost the uncrowned king tournament. Well, she lost to Safara because she hadn't, she didn't want it enough. She didn't have the grit. She didn't have the, the life or death fighting on a razor's edge training that everybody else has had. Literally everybody else. Zeal had it. Athens clearly had it. Garen has had it. Lyndon has had it. Safara has had it. They've all had it. But I mean, maybe Safara to a lesser degree, but she was kind of cheesed up to Overlady anyway. Mercy hasn't had it or hadn't had it until Bloodline when she volunteered to be a part of the anti wandering Titan initiative and got her ass kicked, which is, you know, it was great for her. She, she had most of her growth after that because she stepped out of her comfort zone, got crushed, but survived, but helped her friends. So I think she's going to manifest. Well, I think it would be great if she manifested the joy icon because we need to see more joy icon. We got teased and then Ethan got yanked or Ethan got yanked away from us. He didn't get to manifest his own joy icon. So that sucks. So like what kind of authority would the joy icon give? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not. The more I think about icons and their range of authority, the less it makes a bunch of sense to me. And the more I feel like it's just whatever will wants. Uh, I mean, none of it doesn't make sense but i just i don't know uh there's no like clear-cut answer like the void icon we all expect it to be heavily tied to space and while it does share a large connection to space it doesn't share as much of one as whatever Ragon shen's authority over space is now he got authority from his remnant and i'm assuming he has manifested some sort of icon around space but is there a space icon who knows? We learn that the shadow icon has a connection with fate, which I wouldn't have thought of. That's not an application of shadow that comes to mind, but it's true. Um, but what I think would be really fascinating around the joy icon and mercy manifesting it is that she's on. Well, technically she's on the path of seven pages, but she's on the path of seven pages with the book of eternal night. So the keeper of the book of eternal night, the person who the book found perfect ends up manifesting the joy icon, the joy of eternal night, the sage of joy, the joy sage, the sage of eternal night, the joy. Sage. That's hilarious to me that, you know, it will, Sam, Rebecca. I, I mean, it's Will that's going to be doing this, but Sam, Rebecca, if y'all can like nudge him in this kind of direction, it would be great. The Sage of Eternal Night is also the Joy Sage. Can you imagine Mercy walking up like, hey, everybody? Oh my God, it's the Joy Sage. That's like the most Mercy thing ever. And I love it. And it should happen. And I want all of you watching this who agree with me to like hop on this bandwagon, push it in the subreddit. I, I've learned that because I haven't made that many videos lately, most people in the subreddit have no clue who I am. When I post, this is a complete non sequitur, by the way, but whenever I posted the uh, last podcast, somebody commented on the Reddit, who the hell are these guys? I need to step up my video production and I'm going to. I uh, Anyway, non sequitur, but yeah. Those of you who have been watchers of my channel, this 1100 person little mini legion, push that narrative in the subreddit. The Joy Sage. Mercy, the Joy Sage. It, Mercy, the Joy Sage of Eternal Night. It's perfect. It's perfect. And if she's like the leader of the Akura clan, which is supposed to be like the super scary darkness clan, is led by the Joy Sage. It's the most beautiful thing ever. So that's what I think about Mercy. All right. Who should we do next? Should we do Zeal? Should we do Yaren? Should we do Linden? I think because Yaren and Linden are, are the main characters, we're going to switch over and do Zeal. So on the podcast with Remixed, Remixed had a dream 
that zeal had manifested the apathy icon and i think that's hilarious do i think it's going to be that no because zeal is changing so i don't know what zeal's icon might be but we can speculate a little bit it's not going to be the hammer i mean i guess it could be the hammer but he it's like a little bit too literal and the hammer is supposed to i believe the hammer icon is supposed to signify uh creators and even though he has a hammer and he creates scripts he's not really a creator he's on he's on the path of like the dawn oath or whatever and his his it's all about like knowledge and and what have you so I don't know if there's like a scripter icon to give someone authority over powerful scripts. I mean, that could make him a Titan. Honestly, you know what? I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before and I'm just kind of like doing loops in my own head at this point. But if we're going like Abaddon related authority, he shield icon, maybe because he, yeah. Yeah, he's a protector. He wanted, I mean, that, that's kind of one of the problems what he was worried about uh, becoming a herald because he, his spirit would would hate him. And, and so we're never going to see him go herald first. We're going to see him go sage first. He asked Ethan about it. Ethan said, I think you're closer than you think. Uh, and we're seeing so much more of like him it's like not as much about vengeance anymore, but it's about taking out the dread gods so that other clans and sects don't have to worry about it. He, all of bloodline, he was protecting others. And he was like, you know what? I give up. But then it's like, do I want a chance to actually like make a dent against a dread God? Hell yeah. Let's go. And so in bloodline, he fights with the team. And I just, I don't know. Like, his arc being the character that fell on hard times because his entire sect got wiped out because he wasn't strong enough to protect them because he couldn't get to Sage. He hadn't had that adversity yet. And so he, I have a feeling we're going to see at some point the sect of twin stars being attacked and Zeal being back to his like peak Arc Lord, he's going to protect them. Something's going to click in his mind where it's like, oh, wow, I, I'm able to protect them. I'm a protector. While everybody in the sect is like, he's a protector. He protected us. That's, that's Arc Lord. That's Arc Lord Zeal. And then he manifests the, the shield icon and uh paves paves his way to learning how to make shields and other script bindings and another thing i think about is the pro, the prologue to underlord when serial shows up and fights the brochure and they they cut off the way and she has to use her personal authority to defeat them all before that the abaddon was a titan a, a a one-star Titan. So like the most basic of Titans. That Abaddon had these giant like script formations in the sky. These like super beams. And Zeal already has, like that's what he does. He forms scripts to, to do different acts. To shield him, to create force, to propel him. That's, that's Titan. That's like what Titans do on a conceptual level. So I think Zeal is going to manifest the shield icon. And he's going to be like, not like the tank of the group, but the protector, you know, shielding the group, shielding the sect from the crazies out there. And I can't wait until he, <laughs> he manifests that icon. And then he fights the, uh, the sage of calling storms. And takes his ass out. Talk about a redemption arc. Love that. Protector Zeal. All right. So moving on from Zeal, we're going to switch over to Yaren. 
And I am back and forth with Yaren because I just talked about Zeal manifesting the shield icon, right? And I've been preaching that Yaren is a great candidate for the shield icon for a very long time. But if Zeal's going to manifest the shield icon, it doesn't make sense for Yaren to. Of course, when Yaren manifests an icon, she will become a monarch, which is kind of what we're not going for on Cradle anymore. But I do think we're going to get to that point. And so I'm kind of back to her manifesting either the blood icon or the sword icon. In, in a similar, there's like some similar parallels between her and uh, the frozen blade sage, the winter sage, because the winter sage manifested an elemental icon and then manifested the, the sword icon. And I think that Yaren has a bit more authority over blood at this point, clearly, because of her relationship with the Bleeding Phoenix, her relationship with her own blood shadow. And she knows she's so much stronger against creatures that have blood. So we might see the blood icon, which again would be really interesting parallel because she will have the blood icon and so will the sage of red faith and they're going to come to blows at some point both of them i mean she'll be a monarch but her application of blood i think will be far less slaughter pathy than the sage of red faith it might even be healing at some point which could still prep her for for being a wolf or for being a titan later on. But yeah, I'm not I don't think she's going to manifest the shield icon anymore. So, blood icon probably then sword icon at some point uh throughout their battles with low level Roshir, monarchs, dread gods, things like that. So that's what I think's going on with Yaren. I know not super inspired there, but I mean, at some point, we've got to be given something that's expected. All right, coming back around, we're coming to Linden. Linden already has the void icon, which is not an icon anyone would have expected. We saw so much in Reaper that foreshadowed the creator icon, the, the hammer of creation, the hammer icon. We, we saw so much foreshadowing there. So I think we're going to get that one. He literally created a hammer that he will use to create things. When he created the hammer and he created like the, the dichotomy between destruction and purity, it, it like resonated in a way that he felt was not solely void icon, but like void icon adjacent. And there's a lot of overlap in these concepts, right? The reason Osriel was never able to become a creator or like manifest creative authority is because how far along with personifying the pureness of destruction, he was already there, but he still had to go out into the deep void to get there. So like the void, I feel like is a, is the void icon or the void is a catalyst for like becoming pure in something else. Void vacuum, lack of other things allows you to focus on some, I don't know. Uh, I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but if he's going to be the next like Adriel, which we don't know, the series isn't going to go that far. But if he's going to have authority over over creating, over some form of creation, he's got to manifest the hammer icon. And I feel like that's kind of where his character arc is going. We're probably going to see him create some pretty impressive stuff. I'm going to do other videos on those theories. And so I think we're going to see Lyndon manifest the, the creation icon before he hits Monarch because I think some of the things he's going to create 
are going to assist the team before they hit Monarch or are going to assist the team while they are at Monarch. And I think that Linden is going to build a bunch, a bunch of really interesting things for the sect of twin stars for everybody else. And we might, mm, that's going to be a video, another video, but we might learn that there's a, again, I'm like, I I'm hesitant to go here, but that there's a benefit of having two different cores, no more because with two cores, you can find balance. You can, you can have opposing Madra. You can have opposing concepts that you can find a mesh between. And so it gives you more flexibility the further out you get. It allows you to deal with some more advanced concepts, which I think when, when you deal with, with sacred artists that only have one aspect to their Madra, it might limit the amount of icons that they're able to maybe depending on the madra like if you have a blood core and you're focused on blood techniques your chances of manifesting the winter icon are pretty much zero but your chances of manifesting the blood icon probably pretty high if you're getting to that point so having two cores with two different types of competing or conflicting madra might allow some higher concepts to be achieved. I mean, obviously, Ethan is kind of the FU to that idea in that he had a pure destruction core and he had a pure core and then he was able to manifest all these different icons and dismiss them and whatever, like a destruction path, creating a broom icon. Okay, whatever. A destruction path, creating all these other... Anyway. It's it's tough to to really predict this stuff because Will could go whatever direction he wants to with some of these undecided um, harder rules to his magic system. But Linden for sure, creator icon. He because he's well rounded. He he could manifest a bunch of them. Um, he could manifest icons related to the wolf. He could manifest a dragon icon. He could manifest the strength icon. He could manifest the shield icon because he protects people. He could manifest the, I don't know what the, what the foxes would have, but they're, they're the ones that use portals and teleportation. We could see something around that. And he might even have some, he's going to have to have some sort of authority over restoration, I think. Because there's a, there, I think restoration and creation are very closely aligned. And his body is constantly restoring him using Madra and maybe Soulfire now because Soulfire makes his body a higher existence. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but my opinion is just one of many. So I'm interested in what y'all think. What what icons do we think that Mercy, Zeal, Yaren, and Linden will manifest in the coming books? What books do you think that they'll manifest these icons, if they do at all? And let me know what you think. That's the end of this video. So I really appreciate you watching. And expect a lot more in the future. There's no reason for me not to anymore. Just post a bunch. So thanks for watching.